I have traveled to the planet Earth to understand your society, but I am confused by a concept you call war. Because humans kill each other over desert sand that doesn't even have a lot of oil, I inhabited the body of a farting puppy because it appeared to be the more intelligent creature. As I digest your civilization through Wikipedia, I have come to a confusing page on Lebanon. What is Lebanon? Lebanon is a country. It's north of Israel and west of Syria. That's if you want to call it a country. Lebanon's history is filled with warring religious factions that didn't acknowledge each other's governments. Calling Lebanon a country is like calling it a relationship when you involuntarily tag a girl on Facebook. I told you outside the bowling alley that I didn't even want to get a drink with you. So how could you tag everyone I know on Facebook and say that we're married? Come on, baby. If Lebanon can stay together, me and you can work it out. I don't even understand the basics. Can you put this fighting into context? Lebanon's civil war started in 1975 and it lasted for 15 years. So if you want to understand it, you should read Dr. Seuss's book, The Butter Battle, where they slaughter each other over what side of the bread you're going to butter. I find it interesting how you think that Lebanon's religious wars are a bunch of bullshit, but America's wars are legitimate. Given the actions of US military contractors and oil companies, maybe Dr. Seuss was right. It is just about bread. I do not understand this concept you call religion. What is religion? Okay, so humans don't fully understand the way the world works. Sometimes they do experiments and study it. This is called science. Other times, the question is so complex that it can't be answered through experiments and people just have to believe. This is called religion. What about if you could do experiments, but they just believe without them? That's politics. Nobody researches what they're going to vote. Maybe that's why they put in God we trust on money. To believe that the government is going to protect the value of your currency, you got to have faith. On Wikipedia it says, there is no scholarly consensus over what precisely constitutes a religion. Yet you seem to believe you know what religion is. So are you being religious about religion? Well, typically when someone uses the word religion, they're referring to a set of traditions passed down, although each person tends to interpret it a little differently. In this sense, religion is kind of like a giant game of telephone, where a thousand years ago someone said, Jack and Jill went up the hill, Jack and Jill went up the hill, and somehow it became, kill the Jews. So Lebanon has these groups of people that believe in traditions and fight over them? Right, the three largest religious groups were Maronite Christians, Shiite Muslims, and Sunni Muslims. Can you guess which side America wants to prop up? I'll give you a hint, it's not the Muslims. So you are saying the United States wants to keep the Maronite Christians in charge? Exactly, and Israel. Who better to be your puppet than a group that sounds like marionette? Okay, so Lebanon has these three religious groups in conflict with each other. Israel and America want the Christians to win, but what does this have to do with Israel? Well, at the same time, Israel kicked Palestinians off their land and they fled to Lebanon. So Lebanon is a civil war zone, but you got Palestinian refugees going, let me in, let me in, let me in. And you have oppressed Lebanese going, let me out, let me out, let me out. Now, don't forget, it's not just Palestinian civilians in Lebanon, but also PLO terrorists. Remind me again, what is the PLO? The PLO stands for Palestine Liberation Organization, led by Yasser Arafat to resist Israeli occupation of Palestine. How can you criticize Israel for taking land when Yasser Arafat invaded and occupied Lebanon? We are occupying to resist occupations. Dude, like if you're into that type of resistance, have you considered joining Occupy Wall Street? Well, Jews work in finance, so it'd be redundant. Can you visualize the situation for me? This is a map of 1976 Lebanon. The light green is the PLO and other Muslim militias who use the land closest to Israel to launch rockets. Or if you read the left-wing press, to non-violently protest and cuddle. That map looks like it was made in Microsoft Paint in 1976 in Lebanon. That was the best map I could find. I guess Lebanon likes Microsoft Paint since they fight so often, it'd be a waste of paper to draw a map. Hey, I outlined who's on what side. Oh, is that bombs? Oh, I gotta redraw this. In purple is the Christians, who the West wants to prop up. 
Which if you look at the map kind of makes sense because it looks like if Israel had lost the war with the gigantic West Bank and Gaza Strip. I guess that explains their policy. We bomb whoever's in the south and the east, doesn't matter where. Christians make good puppets, or at least the Jews thought so when they nailed Jesus Christ to the cross. On Wikipedia, it lists other sides to the Lebanon Civil War. Other than the PLO, are there other foreigners? There are. Lebanon is so war-torn that their neighbor Syria sent troops to keep the peace. So did Syria send troops for altruistic purposes? Of course not. The dark green is land conquered by Syria. So they're going, oh yeah, I meant keep the peace. Peace of land. Syria wants to help keep the peace like the United States wants to help Native Americans fight disease. In the previous episode on the Syrian war, I learned that Syria's dictator is Bashar Assad. Is that who we are talking about? No, this is 1976, so we're talking about his father, Hafez Assad, who took over the country using brutal military methods. Bashar Assad was still a young child. Aw, do you smell that? I guess even at a young age, Bashar used chemical weapons. You imbecile! In 1976, Bashar Assad was 11 years old, so he was definitely out of diapers. So just like your actual stories of chemical weapons, it's fabricated. This is complicated and hard for me to follow. Did Syria fight with the Christians or the Muslims? Both! Syria changed sides, first allying with the Christians versus the PLO, then allying with the PLO versus the Christians. No wonder Donald Trump flip-flops on if we should go to war with Syria. He's keeping with tradition. Out of all of the dictators in the Middle East, from Iran to Saudi Arabia, Syria's dictator is the least religious. So he's saying, I'm not even going to pretend a god would approve of this shit. If I understand this correctly, there are three separate conflicts going on. First, Christians versus various Muslim groups in Lebanon. Second, foreign Syrians versus both them at different times. Third and separately, the PLO is fighting Israel. But they are based in Lebanon. Exactly, you got it. So to stop these PLO attacks, in 1982, Israel invaded Lebanon with 60,000 troops, 800 tanks, and an unknown number of planes. You're just saying unknown planes because it's not listed on Wikipedia. Maybe. The important part, though, is that Israel isn't claiming sovereignty over anywhere in Lebanon. They invaded merely to stop the PLO and give security and peace of mind to northern Israelis. Ah yes, another group enters to keep the peace. Lebanon has so many unexpected groups come for peace, you'd think it was 1969 Woodstock. Israel's UN ambassador saying they were just trying to push the PLO north 25 miles out of rocket range. Well, the Israeli army has moved into southern Lebanon. It has a clear-cut single mission, namely pushing the PLO forces out of artillery range of Israeli settlements and towns in northern Israel so that we can get the people, the women, the children out of the shelters. Israel, of course, has no claim on a single square inch of Lebanese territory. Did they strictly follow this plan? Of course not. Once the Israeli tanks started rolling in, they started suppressing the enemies of the Christians to put them in charge. Oh, we'll push the PLO north, but we're putting the voting booths in the south. Now, a great many observers believe Israel may be bent on altering its political balance forever, encouraging a new state dominated by right-wing Christians. Oh, just 25 miles north, huh? For a group that got lost for 40 years in the desert with Moses, they're likely to get a little bit off track. That 25 mile estimate was where intelligence suggested that the PLO likely was. And no, they didn't use a Microsoft Paint map. I'm so confused by this map. The PLO and Muslim groups are on the same area. Is the PLO Muslim? No, the PLO is a secular political group sharing their land. Well, the PLO was fighting on the Muslim side. But let's be honest. Yasser Arafat does not give the slightest diddly squat about religion. Even though the PLO fought the Christians, Yasser Arafat later married a Christian blonde chick. Let's kill Christians. Let's bomb that church. Oh no, no. That church is where Arafat is getting married. Let's bomb that church. Oh no, he told me his side girl is in there. Oh, well, we're definitely good to bomb that temple. Well, in case he gets caught cheating, that temple has his divorce lawyer. Yasser Arafat was a horny guy. I guess he was trying to occupy the womb. 
You're missing the point. Israel has no sovereignty over Lebanon and doesn't have the right to suppress the majority Muslim population. But the Christians are the most powerful now with Israeli support and have little interest in sharing power with the majority Muslims. The wild thing is, you often hear Israelis give as an excuse for why they should get American money is, oh, you could trust us, we're the only democracy in the Middle East. Yeah, you won't allow anyone else to vote. Maybe this is like Dr. Seuss's book, The Butter Battle. Only we should substitute it with body of Christ bread and a kosher bagel. While world peace is important, let's take a break so I can sniff the private parts of other puppies. By the way, what was the point of this? This video just set up the war by telling you who's on what side. In part two, we'll give a thrilling blow-by-blow -blow timeline of the siege of Beirut, with Israeli tanks surrounding the city in a standoff till Arafat comes out. You may think you don't care about debates over Lebanese civilian casualties, but these events led directly to the rise of Hezbollah and the towers falling in Lebanon inspired Osama bin Laden. So if you want to have a real discussion about 9-11 or modern tension with Iran, I'll see you next episode for the Siege of Beirut.